Hello YouTube and welcome to the next train guide video. This is the series where we take a detailed look at one particular locomotive or unit in each episode. We take a look at the history and technical specifications before discussing any pertinent driving techniques for that particular train. In the last episode we looked at the Class 60 and in today's video we will be taking a look at the Class 50 diesel electric locomotive. The Class 50s were built by English Electric at Vulcan Foundry between 1967 and 1968. A total of 50 were produced, with their primary purpose being to haul passenger services north of Crewe towards Glasgow on the West Coast Main Line before the electrification of the route. The locomotives were run on lease until British Rail purchased the fleet in 1973. After electrification of the West Coast Main Line was completed in 1974, the fleet was transferred to the western region of British Rail, initially running on Main Line services out of London Paddington and Birmingham New Streets, before gradually being relegated to other duties by the then new Class 253 High Speed Train, also known as the HST, which is today the Class 43. The design for the Class 50s came after trials with a prototype locomotive which had a similar body to the Deltic, but was modified to accommodate a different engine and cooling system. The locomotives were trialled by British Rail on services along the East Coast Main Line out of London King's Cross under the codename DP2. The cost for development of the locomotives was privately funded by English Electric and, in an unusual move, British Rail then decided to lease the locomotives rather than purchase them outright. The locomotives were then built by English Electric at the Newton Lee Willows plant in Merseyside. They were delivered in the then brand new BR Corporate Blue livery and the locomotives were known as the English Electric Type 4. They were reclassified as Class 50s from 1973 onwards to conform with the new top system of classification which BR introduced. Class 50 locomotives were notoriously unreliable, especially when booked to run services with frequent stops, a duty which they were not suited for. As a result of this, the entire fleet was refurbished at Doncaster Works between 1979 and 1984. The arrangement of the air intake fan was modified. Originally, the setup of the fan system could prevent fresh air from entering the engine room, as well as preventing stale warm air from escaping. This led to a number of main generator failures. Dust and dirt could become lodged in the filter system, and this could prevent filtered air from being circulated properly, causing further reliability issues. While the filtration system used in the Class 50s was widely used in other countries, the humidity of the climate in Britain had not been taken into account during the design stage, and it was this humidity which caused issues with dirt in the filtration system. A number of features were also removed at the time of the refurbishment, such as slow speed control and rheostatic braking. After refurbishment, the sucking noise which gave the class the nickname Hoovers was no longer present. The first six of the refurbished Class 50s were painted in standard BR Blue livery, but in 1980 they started to be painted in BR Blue Large Logo livery, which you can see here. After refurbishment, the locomotives were based at Old Oak Common Depot on the Great Western Main Line in London and also at Lera Depot in Plymouth. They continued to be used on services out of London Paddington and were also used on services from London Waterloo to Salisbury and Exeter. In 1986, Network South East took control of the West of England Main Line and so Class 50s running the route from London Waterloo to Exeter via Salisbury were repainted into Network South East livery. Towards the end of the decade, Class 50s were primarily found on these services, as well as fast services between London Paddington and Oxford on the Great Western Main Line. In 1987, consideration was given to using the Class 50s as freight locomotives. One Class 50 was tested for this purpose, having been fitted with modified Class 37 bogies and being repainted into trainload grey rail freight livery. 
This livery isn't available with the Class 50 in Train Simulator, so can't be shown here. The Loco was then tested on China clay trains in Cornwall and based at Lera Depot in Plymouth. Unfortunately, this project wasn't very successful and by 1989 it had been abandoned, with the Class 50 returning to normal duties. During the 1990s, the fleet was once again suffering extensive reliability problems. On the Paddington to Oxford route, the locos were displaced by the Class 47, meaning that the only route where they were still regularly scheduled to run was the West of England mainline between Waterloo and Exeter. However, the start-stop pattern in the timetabling on this route was not well suited for the Class 50. The Class 50s ran best when on long-distance, non-stop services, and suffered far more frequent problems when being used on stopping services. The West of England mainline also has a number of long single-track sections, which meant if just one locomotive failed, then it could cause serious delays for all other services using that route. As a result of this, the decision was made to retire the fleet, first replacing the Class 50s with Class 47s, before introducing the then new Class 159 DMUs onto the route from 1993. Of the 50 Class 50s which were built, 32 were scrapped with 18 currently remaining. Five of these locomotives are currently registered for use on the main line, with a number awaiting refurbishment. Class 50s today regularly make appearances on preserved railways, though mainly during diesel gala events. The Class 50 in Train Simulator comes with a number of different liveries. These are BR Blue, both tops and pre-tops, Great Western Railway Green, BR Dual Green, Network Southeast Blue, both original and revised, and BR Blue Large Logo. Now that we've had a look at the history of the Class 50, let's take a look at the technical specifications. The Class 50 is a six-axle Coco locomotive, meaning there are six wheels on each of the two bogies. It is 68 feet 6 inches long, 8 feet 10 inches wide, and 12 feet 9 inches high. The locomotive weighs 117 tonnes and has a fuel capacity of 1,055 gallons. The locomotive has a wheel diameter of 3 feet 7 inches and can run with a minimum curve radius of 4 chains. The engine in the Class 50 is an English Electric 16 CSVT, which is a 16-cylinder engine with a capacity of 246 litres. This gives a maximum power output of 2,700 bhp. The engine powers six electric traction motors, which are rated at 400 horsepower each, for a total of 2,400 horsepower. The maximum tractive effort of the locomotive is 48,500 pounds of force, with a continuous tractive effort of 33,000 pounds of force at 23.5 miles per hour. The loco uses dual air and vacuum braking and has a maximum permitted speed of 100 miles per hour. Now that we've had a look at the history and technical specifications of the Class 50, let's take a look inside the cab. So here we are in the cab of a Network Southeast Class 50 at Exeter St David Station. And what we're going to do is have a quick look around the cab and take a look at the various controls and dials. And then I'm just going to drive a very short journey between here and Exeter Central Station, just to demonstrate a couple of the handling and driving techniques which are pertinent to the Class 50. To set up the loco, I need to move the reversing handle into the neutral position, and then at that point the AWS alarm will go off, and then I will need to reset that with the Q key. Now that that's done, I'll move the reversing handle up into the forward position when it's time to depart. There's not a lot more now that we need to do to set up, so the next thing I'm going to do is press H to turn on the headlights. 
And now we're going to look at some of the controls within the cab. Now in front of us here we have the brake gauges. Unfortunately only the middle one seems to work. I'm sure that's not quite how it is in real life, but when using the brakes that's the only needle which I noticed working. And you can see there that the needle is pointing just below 60. So as I release the brakes here you'll see that the needle climbs, so that when the brakes are fully released they're just over the 70 mark. And now if I move the brake handle back on, you can see that the needle is falling again. So to our left here is the train brake handle, controlling the brakes on the locomotive and the whole train. And so the more that that handle is moved there forward, the harder the brakes are applied right up until we're in the emergency position there. And then you can also see at this point that the needle there has dropped to zero, indicating there's no pressure in the brake pipe. And you can also see that the brake gauge next to that, the needles have actually climbed to around 55, indicating that the emergency brakes are now applied. Below the train brake handle we have the locomotive brake handle, so the more you push that forward the harder the brakes are applied, but this controls the brakes only on the locomotive and not on the rest of the train. In the middle of the dashboard here we have three working controls, so the first is the wiper control, which if I press that now, you can see that the wiper on this side has come on, but the wiper on the other side hasn't come on, in fact that's controlled separately from a wiper button over here, if you click on that you can now see that the wiper is on on both sides, so I'm just going to turn the wipers off again now. Next we have the sander, which controls sand which drops sand onto the track to help the locomotive with grip in poor Rhodesian conditions. And then to the right of that now we have the horn control, which is a two-tone horn controlled with the space bar and the B key. I would just like to point out that I am using the Armstrong Powerhouse sound pack, so I'm not sure if you have the two-tone space and B horn uh, with the default sounds for this loco, but you certainly do with the sound pack. So over here is the reversing handle, which uh, we moved a moment ago. You can see it's currently in the EO position, which is engine off. And so we have then moved that into forward when it's time to depart. And you can also see below that there is a reverse position as well. Now over here we have the power handle which has seven notches of power and so what you do is you just gradually start to increase power when you want to move the train and keep an eye on what's happening over here on the gauge there which says a small k a you might not be able to read that very clearly so uh, if you look at the gauges from the right it's the second gauge from the right there which is the ammeter. Now as you increase power, that's showing how much electricity is being generated by the engine into the traction motors. And so the higher that is, the faster you will accelerate. Uh, however, you don't want it to go too high and certainly don't want it to go too high too quick. Or you could cause problems with the locomotive. In real life you would. Unfortunately in Train Simulator it's not quite like that, so uh, you could pretty much drive in a way that would damage the loco in real life without damaging the locomotive here at all. I'll demonstrate more of uh, what goes on with the ammeter when we start the drive to Exeter Central Station. Another feature with the Class 50 is opening windows, which uh, as I'm sure you're all aware now, I always like to drive with the windows open where possible. And so now that we've had a look at that, we are pretty much ready to start. I don't think there's many more buttons to cover. I'll just mention here the AWS uh, reset button, which is there. And you can also see above that the AWS sunflower indicator. And another feature that you've got, not that it's much use because you don't actually get sun glare within game, is actually the sun blinds, which you can pull down or put up on both sides of the loco. So now that we've had a look at that, let's head out to Exeter Central just to have a quick look at the driving techniques before concluding this video. So on departure from Exeter St David's here, we've just got a short three quarter of a mile section to drive. And what I've just done is I put the power handle into notch one for as gentle a start as possible. And now you can see we're moving and we're accelerating up towards 5 miles per hour. I'm going to start increasing the power, so I'm going up another two notches. And now you can see the ammeter needle has climbed, and I'm keeping an eye on that to make sure it doesn't climb too rapidly. We don't actually need a lot of power here as we're just driving um, a short distance currently under a 15 mile per hour speed limit, though that speed limit is soon to go up to 30. 
as you can see here. So I've just shut off the power at this point and we're just about to start going up quite a steep gradient. I believe it's 1 in 60 if I remember correctly. So in a moment as I accelerate towards 30 miles per hour I'm then going to give us much more power than usual to accelerate towards that or else we just won't be able to gather enough speed. Now that we're doing the speed of closer to 15 miles per hour I'm not just going to go now straight into notch 1 of power I've actually gone straight up to notch 4 and now you can see the ammeter is climbing quite rapidly. I wouldn't want it to go too much above that or it's starting to get into the zone where really you don't want the needle to be pointing. But as you accelerate the needle actually begins to fall off and then you can give even more power still. And so the needle is very slowly falling towards the left again now. And I don't know if you can quite see it, but there's a small thing on the ammeter, it's just a slight yellow line there, and that's where we don't really want to get the needle to, but now at this point, I've been able to go up to full power, due to the speed that we're currently travelling at. However, now that we've come out of this tunnel, we've got only around a quarter of a mile to go to Exeter Central Station, so at this point I've shut off the power, I'm just allowing the gradient to help the train slow down. And now I'm going to make a very light brake application. So you can see there that the needle has fallen from just above 70 down to around 65, which is bringing our speed down very gently. And that's something you want to try and aim to do when stopping any train, but certainly I remember when travelling on loco haul trains that they always used to use very gentle and light braking to control the train and bring it to a comfortable stop for the passengers. So I'm just going to aim to stop here just beyond the roof. And then that will be the conclusion of this episode of the Train Guide series. So as you can see I've now increased the braking as we've slowed down more as the brakes have become slightly less effective. We're now pointing at 60 on the brake gauge. So here we are, arrival at Exeter Central. And so that brings this episode to a conclusion, so I'd just like to thank you very much for watching this video, I really do hope that you have enjoyed it. Please don't forget that you can find me on Facebook for the latest updates, the link of which is in the description of this video. Once again, thank you for watching.